making this mistake can really hurt the performance of your Next.js applications. And this mistake is related to parallel and sequential data fetching. And this is straight from the Next.js docs. And they mention that you should be aware of these two different data fetching patterns, parallel and sequential. And their docs go to explain this further, but the kind of TLDR of it is that there's two different kind of ways that you can fetch data and you can kind of unknowingly fetch data in a not so great way. So the two ways, as it kind of shows in this diagram here, are sequential as well as parallel. So with sequ sequential data fetching, you make a network request. So you can imagine that like this is the request and this is the response for your data. So you make a request and get a response. And then once, once that is finished, you might make another request and get another response. And that might be in another page. And then in another kind of component, you make another request and a response. So you sequentially make a request one after another throughout your components. And as you can see, this takes a decent amount of time to do for all these components to render. Because you do request response, then this request and this response, and then when that's done, this request and that response. However, what if you made all of these requests at the same time? Well, that is a parallel data fetching pattern in which for this root layout component, you make the request and response, but at the same time, you make the request for your dashboard layout and then you render that component, and then you make the request for the settings page all at the same time. So you make all these requests at the same time, and then you render these components out. And you can see that this takes way less time to do compared to sequential data fetching. And this is also along the idea of waterfalls. So like in the network tab of your browser, if you make one request after another, you're going to see in the network tab just like this waterfall of requests because you're making them sequentially. And that can really slow down your application because there's a chance that you could have several different components that are nested within each other within your application. And if all those make longer network requests, it can lead your page to have very slow load times, especially when you're on more of kind of a throttled network or, or maybe not so great internet connection or something like that. Whereas if you make all those requests at the same time, you could definitely cut your page load time in half, which could make a huge difference to the performance of your application as well as different business considerations for whatever you're trying to do. So let's now spin up a Next.js application. And in this application, I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually accidentally make sequential data requests. And then I'm going to show you how you could do those in parallel instead. So let's go ahead and head back to VS Code here. And what I'm going to do is just create a template Next.js application. So npx create next app at latest. And I'm just going to call this data hyphen fetching hyphen patterns. And I will also link this GitHub repo in the description box below. When I'm going to create this, we're not going to use TypeScript for this. No ESLint. I am going to use Tailwind CSS, no SRC directory, and I am going to use the app router. And I'm not going to customize the default import alias. So now that this is creating my app, once it's done here, I'm just going to go file, open and then open this within VS code. So now that I have this empty project open, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two components. So I'm going to go within my app, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call this components. And within my components folder, I'm going to create a new file. I'm just going to call this posts.jsx. And then in this file, we're going to make a network request and we're going to do this with just this JSON placeholder API. It's basically just a free API that we can use to get some data for our application. So I can kind of show you this pattern of data fetching. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to export an async 
function and I'm going to actually export default async function. And for this function, we're just going to call it posts. And we're going to, at the very top of this function, I'm going to be able to show you these net network requests within my console here, because these are going to be server components. The same principles would apply to client components though. So still be careful in client components. But since this is a server component, I'm going to console log these within my, my terminal here. So I'm going to do console.log getting posts. And then below this, I'm going to say const response is equal to await fetch. And then the URL that we're going to make this fetch request to is HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash JSON placeholder dot type of code dot com forward slash posts. And then we're going to set a limit of our posts. So question mark. And then we're going to do underscore limit is equal to three. We're just going to do three posts here. So JSON placeholder dot type of code dot com. And we're going to get some posts. And then once we get this response here, we're going to say const posts is equal to await response dot JSON. And then we're going to call that. And then once we convert this JSON here, we're going to say console.log done getting posts. So this will give us a good idea of when we make this request as well as when we finish this request. And then from here, what we're going to do is I'm just going to return and I'm going to add some styles here in a second, but we'll just return a div with an H1 and I'm not really focusing on styles here. So you wouldn't have to style this. I just want to do it. So it looks okay here for you guys, but I'm going to do an H1 with posts and then I'm going to do an unordered list here. And then within my unordered list, I'm going to do post.map and it's going to accept a post. And then I'm going to return a list item in which my key is going to be my post.id. And then I'm going to render out my post.title. And if you wanted to look at the API for JSON placeholder, you definitely can, but it's going to return posts that have an ID and title. And then that's going to render that out. We have our list item. And then right here, we also are going to render out another component. But we'll we'll go make that component first and then we'll we'll render it out there. But now I'm gonna add just some styles to this kind of outline here or to this HTML here. So if you want to go to my GitHub and just copy and paste those, you definitely can. I would recommend that if you want to have styles. If you don't want to have styles, that's not really the point of this video. So you probably don't even need to add them here. I'm just gonna do it to make this look nice and okay. So I've just gone ahead and added those Tailwind CSS styles. So if you want to pause the video here and just type those in, that's totally cool as well. But with that, we're going to make another component here. And this component, it's going to be called albums.jsx. And we're going to do a very similar thing in which we are going to export default async function and it's going to be albums. And we're going to do the very same thing that we did before. So I'm going to go back to my posts here and I'm going to copy everything right here and just paste it at the top of albums. But instead of console logging, getting posts, I'm going to say console log getting albums. And instead of done getting posts, I'm going to say done getting albums. And then we also need to adjust our request here. So instead of posts, with a limit of three, all we need to change is change this to albums with a limit of three. And then instead of calling this posts, we're going to call this albums. So right here, let's call that albums. And then we're going to return a very similar thing. So I'm going to return and it's just going to be a div, which I'll add some styles to in a second. H2, we'll do albums. And did I do an H2 here earlier? I think I did. So I did an H1. I'll just do an H2 here to keep things consistent here. And then under my albums, I'll do an unordered list again. And then I will map over my albums. 
and I'll accept an album. And then I will return a list item where the key is going to be my album.id. And then I'm going to render out my album.title. So very, very similar interface here. But now I'm just going to copy and paste some styles in that I've already created. And now that I've pasted these in, feel free to pause this and write these styles in if you want to have the styles. But as I said before, that's not really the focus here. But now we have our albums component that gets some albums and renders those out. And then we have a post component that does the same thing. But now within the post component, I'm going to render out my albums. So under my unordered list here, I'm just going to render out my albums component. And then I import that from dot forward slash albums. So we have our post component and then we render out our albums. And then we're also console logging our requests here. So now within our page, I am going to remove everything within my main tags here. So I'm going to remove all of this and then hit delete. So just our main tag, I'm going to delete this as well, but I'm going to import and render my posts component after importing that from dot forward slash components forward slash posts. So I'm rendering my posts and then my post renders out my albums within it. I'm going to run npm run dev to start our server here and then i'm going to open up a localhost 3000 so i'm here within localhost 3000 you can see i have some posts here and i also have some albums here below so my posts and then i render my albums within my post component and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a hard refresh of this page and then we're going to go look in my terminal and we're going to look at the council.log statement so let's do a hard refresh and then let's look at the council.log statements here. So as you can see, I see getting posts, done getting posts, getting albums, done getting albums. So what's going on here is I am rendering this post component, but I get all of my posts here and then I finish getting my posts. And then I go to render out this albums component and I make this request and then I render my albums. So what we see is we have kind of this sequential data fetching going on to where first I get all of my posts and then I get all of my albums. But like we don't necessarily need to do that. Like our albums aren't dependent on our posts. So we could get all of our albums and all of our posts at the same time. So this is just kind of, you know, artificially making this longer to render. But you can also see that this, this is a pretty easy mistake to make to where like, you know, this, this code, it, it seems reasonable. Like we're just rendering this albums component within our post component. And like, there seems to be nothing wrong with what we're doing here, but we are causing this kind of a waterfall effect of getting all of our posts, and then we go get all of our albums here, the sequential data fetching. So how can we kind of adjust this and kind of fix this? Well, there's you know probably multiple ways that we could do this. We could first not render our albums within our post component. So we could just render those separately within our page. So we could do posts, and then I could render out my albums here below, and that would work just fine. But sometimes you might want to render like your albums within another component. So how could we do that and still prevent sequential data fetching? Well, if I go to back to my post here, what we can do is we can actually use the promise.all in JavaScript. So here at the top of the file, we're going to create our get post function as well as a get albums function. So I'm going to say async function get posts and then all we're going to do is this right here we're going to copy and paste all of our logic for getting posts but then we're going to return our posts and then we're going to do the same thing for our albums so i'm going to copy and paste 
everything at the top of this file, including the console.logs. And then I'm going to create an async function called get albums and then paste it in here and then just return our albums. And then at the top of this file, I'm going to remove everything here and same thing in my albums. I'm going to remove those requests. But now what I want to do is I want to get this data, but I just want to get the promises for those data at first. I don't want to await those promises because that's causing the sequential data fetching. So all I want to do here is I want to say const posts promise is equal to get posts and call that function. So that is just going to return a promise, which is just a placeholder for a future value. And then I'm going to say const albums promise is equal to get albums. And I'm going to call that. But now I want to use promise.all to get the data from these promises once those promises actually resolve. So here I'm going to say const posts and albums is equal to await promise dot all. And then we're going to pass in an array with our posts promise as well as our albums promise. So once these promises resolve, my promise.all is going to resolve and it's going to return an array that has our post data as well as our albums data. And then now we could just render or pass our albums as a prop for albums component. So I can say albums is equal to my albums data. And then within albums here, I can just accept as a prop my albums. And then I already rendered this data out. So this should theoretically make both of these requests at the same time. So in parallel, and then we use promise to all to get that data and then just render it out within our albums and our post component. So within my console here, I'm going to just do a bunch of return statements. So we get a clean console and then let's come back and I'm going to do a hard refresh on this page. And now let's go back to my terminal here. And what we're going to see is I'm getting my posts and then I'm getting my albums. So I'm kicking off those requests at the same time here in parallel. And then I'm done getting my post and I'm done getting my albums also at the same time. So what you can see here is now, since I've structured things this way, I kick off those requests in parallel and I go get these at the same time. And as I showed you in that diagram earlier, that can dramatically improve the performance of your application if you're not kind of artificially creating these waterfalls and making these sequential data fetches when you don't actually need to. So that is kind of a tricky mistake that people can make in Next.js, but I think you should definitely be aware of these two data fetching patterns and you can really improve the performance of your application by keeping these kind of data fetching patterns in mind. So Hopefully that showed you a good example as well as how to solve this issue. And thanks for tuning into this. I'll see you in that next one.